This is a tutorial on how to deal with somewhat challenging green screen keying when you have a shot that does not exactly have perfectly even lighting of the green screen and the green drop cloth. In this shot, as you can see, the uh, lighting is pretty good here in the middle, but of course it falls off here on the edges. And these, uh, this drop cloth is a slightly different color and it's being lit by more blue light. So just pulling one key on the whole shot is probably not going to do the trick. What we have to do is create um, several different versions of this shot and put them on different layers and then do different uh, keys on each one of them and then crop those uh, individual layers and composite them together. I can see that we're going to have to do a key for the main area. We're probably going to have to do a separate one for this shadow area, a separate one for the drop cloth. And uh, also we're going to have to do a separate layer for this white board here, which is reflecting a lot of the green. So that's going to be about four layers that we're going to do. That's not too bad. So first, let's work on the main area here. So I'm going to uh, go to my effects and open up keying and select the ultra key double clicking on it to apply it to the shot now when i go to effect controls there is my ultra key here's my eyedropper i'm going to select the eyedropper and then i like to pull a key from the darker areas not the perfect area here but i'm actually going to go over here in between the legs of the tripod and select one of these darker areas so when i do that I can see it's certainly not a perfect key. It's perfect for this area, but uh, not so great here and certainly not so great here down where we have the different colored drop cloth. But let's see what we can do to clean up this key. So first thing I'm going to do is go switch from the composite view to the alpha channel view. And now we can really uh, hone in on where our problem areas are. So next I'm going to go to the setting here and change from the default setting to aggressive. And right away you can see that has helped a lot to clean up the key. But we still of course have problem areas. And uh, let's see if we can tweak it a little more by going to matte generation, opening up that section. And the first thing I always try is the pedestal. Let's see if I slide that to the right. Yeah, that helps. That actually takes out uh, a lot of the problems down here in the green drop cloth and it eroded this shadow quite a bit. The one thing that I'm still concerned about are these holes that you can see in this character's legs and the, the legs of the chair. So let's go up to the shadow controller and let's see what happens there. If I drag it to the left, those holes get worse. Let me drag it to the right and they disappear. Now that does bring up the problems with the shadow area here and here. This one I'm not too concerned about. I think we might cover that up later with a rock or something. This area has gotten worse, but I'm going to make a separate key for that anyway. So I think we're in pretty good shape now for this layer. I'm switching back to the composite view. And yeah, that's a pretty clean key here for the main area. Now, uh, of course, we want to get rid of some of this junk, uh, the boom and this corner where there's no drop cloth. So we're going to mask this layer. So to mask, we go up to Opacity and the Free Draw Bezier. Do not confuse that with the Free Draw Bezier under Ultra Key. That is not what we are masking, not the key. We're uh, masking the whole layer. So select the Free Draw Bezier. And now on we need to draw outside of the frame. So we need to change from Fit to uh, something smaller. On my computer, I can shrink it down 75%. That works pretty well. All right, and I know I'm going to cut out this area, so I'm going to start here and then cut out the boom, 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 okay, and then come around here. I'm not going to worry about this shadow, but I am going to cut out this, uh, the whole bottom section here, 
because I know I'm going to create a separate layer for that to try to make it a little bit better. So I'm cutting out uh, this bottom area and then completing the mask. And that stuff goes away. Now we have to, of course, bring back the top of the tent. We're also going to be bringing back the drop cloth here on the bottom. And then we're going to work on this, uh, this whiteboard here a little bit later. But for now, we've got a good uh, key on this main section. Now to bring back the top of the tent, we need to create a new layer. So I'm going to hold down my option key and drag upward on the timeline from this layer to create a duplicate. Next, I want to delete all the work that I did on that. So first I'm going to go to where it says mask one, highlight that and hit my delete key and the mask goes away. I'm also going to get rid of the ultra key by hitting delete and it goes away and we're back to square one. So now we just want to key this area up here. So I'm going to reapply the ultra key by double clicking on it. There it is. I'm going to grab the eyedropper and I'm going to go to this medium dark area here. Click on that. And yeah, that does a pretty good job of removing uh, the green from that shadow area. Let's go to the alpha channel view. Okay, we need to expand that a bit to get rid of this shadow and this shadow area or this bright area here. So uh, first let's switch to the aggressive setting. Oh, that did most of what we need to do. Okay, but let's go to matte generation and let's try pedestal. Let's see if, how that can help. There we go. I think that does it. We've got this whole area around here cleaned up. Let me just try the shadow controller a little bit here. Yeah, I, th I think that's pretty clean around there. Now we have to mask it. So I'm going up to the opacity section to the free draw bezier and let's draw a mask around this area, making sure that it overlaps with the mask that I drew on the layer below. And I think we've got it. Let's switch to composite view. And there we go. That's good. All right, so we've restored this area. Now I want to restore the area down here. So we're going to do the same kind of thing, holding down my option key, dragging up to create a duplicate. Let's remove everything we just did to that layer. Mask, get rid of it, mask one and the ultra key, get rid of it. So back to square one. Now we want to key this bluish green area down here. So reapplying the ultra key and eyedropper, let's select kind of in this shadowy area right here. Good, and that removes the green from there. And then we want to mask it. So going up to masking tool and let's draw around that area over to we'll say over to here connect up the dots and there we go all right now the last thing I want to work on you may notice here there's this sparkly stuff going on here in this whiteboard and uh, this is problematic because uh, the whiteboard is reflecting the green off the drop cloth so let's go create a layer for that so once again holding down option dragging upward creating a new layer and removing all the effects from that so get rid of the mask get rid of the ultra key okay now, I'm actually not going to add a key to this because we don't really want to remove the green because it is reflecting green. So all I want to do really is mask this. So I'm going up to Opacity, the Free Draw Bezier, and I'm going to draw a mask around this object to isolate it. And, you know, you can rough draw it and then refine it like that and 
connecting this up. And there you can see how it has a lot of green in it. So what I want to do is remove this green. And so I'm going to go to my color tab and I'm just going to pull down the saturation and make it black and white. There is no, there's not supposed to be any color in that thing. Okay. And so now when we play it, all that sparkly stuff is gone from in there and it looks pretty good. Okay. Now it's time to try putting this all against some kind of a um, background, some kind of plate. So let's make room for that. I'm highlighting all my clips, dragging them up, and let's go find a plate shot. So I have some temporary plates here, and I've got a stock footage uh, shot of Starry Sky. Let's look at that. And yeah, this is a nice shot to use because it's got all this dark area down here where this hill is, and then a beautiful starry sky. So let's put that on the video one track. And there it is. Uh, but of course, it's too small. It looks like they're at a drive-in movie out in the mountains. So we've got to go up to effect controls, increase the scale of that shot. And then I think that looks pretty good. But I think I want the horizon a little higher. So I'm going to raise the horizon up. And that's nice except for I see this hard line here because this the dark hills are not as dark as the bottom of the screen and I can hide that by softening this edge and I can do that by uh, drawing a mask around it and then feathering the edge of the mask so up to the opacity section the free draw bezier and I'm going to draw a mask just inside of the edge of this uh, picture and all the way around the top leaving extra room here and completing the mask here and then I go to where it says mask feather and increase the feathering a bit okay and I still see a little bit of an edge here so let's pull it up to there and take a look at that yeah I think that's kind of nice. Now, uh, I have now the characters on several layers, and I may want to do some adjustments to the tent and um, these guys, uh, especially in terms of color, temperature, and uh, exposure, and so on. And it would be very awkward to do that separately on, on these different layers. So it's a nice idea at this point, if I'm pretty happy with the keying, to kind of flatten them um, by nesting. So I'm going to highlight these four green screened clips. I'm going to right click and go to nest. And I could give it a name or just leave it nested sequence and click OK. So now it's flattened into one clip, which I could always go back, open this up and work on it some more. But what this allows me to do is now make changes to this clip and it's going to change all the layers at the same time. So for example, I think maybe the moon is shining on them, so they need to be a little bluer. So I'm going to the color temperature here, and I slide this to the left, and yeah, all the layers get bluer simultaneously. And that does uh, kind of look more like night. And then I can get even fancier if I want to, like maybe if I want to add some warm firelight here, on this character's knee and shoulder, I could create a separate version of uh, this nested sequence and put it on top and then mask it to have a little bit of warm light around here. I could do all sorts of things with this layer. But I think we've come quite uh, a ways here in dealing with this uh, somewhat problematic shot. Green screening is usually not this hard. When we do medium shots and close-ups against the green screen, it's going to be a lot easier to light it evenly. But it is quite possible uh, with some extra work to do a wide shot, a complex shot, that does not necessarily have the most even lighting, as you can see here. And then I've gone and added some more elements to this shot. I added some snow and some tree branches and so on. And here's an example of what this uh, sequence can look like in the end.
<laughs> okay. Screw this. I'm going to the tent. It is too cold out here. Bye bye. No, not yet. Titan's about to come out of Saturn's shadow. Who cares about Titan? It's just some moon. Just thought we might see alien life tonight. <laughs>